Hello, Jeffrey here. So this video is a commentary describing my process for this drawing. As you can tell by the title and the visuals, this drawing is of a lion. I haven't drawn animals in a little while, so I decided that this is the next animal that I want to draw. As usual with my drawings, I start by drawing an outline of the overall picture. After that, I draw in some of the major features. For this drawing, that includes the eyes, nose, mouth, and major differences in hair composition. Once I feel the outline is accurate compared to the reference image that I use, I start to color. I start by coloring the eyes because that's the most difficult part to get right. Once I've completed that, I start to color in the areas around the eyes. In this case, there's a lot of fur around the eyes. So I start by shading in areas of fur that have distinct patterns. For example, there's an area right below his eye, in front of his eye, that has a line moving downwards. So I start by kind of shading in that area, trying to match my reference image, and then slowly shade in around that. As usual with my drawings, I'm trying to put in as much detail as possible. I zoom into my reference image until I can see the pixels. And then from there, I start to compare the pixels in the reference image with my drawing and draw in lines that I see that the pixels form, such as for the fur. Now I'm also looking to match the color of the pixels with the color pencils that I have. So every time I see a change in pixel color, I change color pencils. For the area of the drawing between his eye and nose, I'm switching between about 30 color pencils. Here I am drawing his whiskers and drawing the spots in his face where the whiskers come out of. For the spots, I use darker colored pencils, and then for the areas around that, I shade and blend the colors together using lighter colored pencils. Unlike painting, you can't really layer the colors as much with color pencils. So where there are whiskers, I tend to draw the area around the whisker instead of drawing the actual whisker themselves, so that way the white paper can serve as a background for them. As you can see, each time there's a whisker, I change to a lighter color pencil and shade in around it. And then I move on to drawing the mouth. The mouth is very dark, and after I draw the darker portions, I blend in the lighter areas of fur around the mouth and whiskers that overlap with it. While I'm drawing, I also tend to fill in the edge areas. Now the fur on the edges is lighter, so I use lighter pencils for those areas, and then slowly they transition into darker colors as I move in inwards from the edges. As you can see, there's some overlap between light edge fur and inward darker fur. Now, on his mane, there's kind of a transition between different types of fur. The fur that's closer to the ear is darker and more dense, and so I use darker pencils that have and draw thicker lines, while the fur above that is lighter and less dense, so I use thinner lines. As I work my way along the fur from left to right, the fur also gradually gets darker because there are more shadows. Another area of difference when it comes to drawing to keep in mind is drawing the ear. For the ear, the fur is in more different directions, and the fur has more parts of it coming towards the viewer, so there's more foreshortening going on, and you need to keep that in mind while drawing this area. The pixels and lines are also darker, and I make sure to draw the darkest lines first. That way I have a strong reference point from which to draw the rest of the fur. I also pay more attention of how to shade from dark to light using different colored pencils. The dark areas I usually use black and then a little lighter than that. I then transition to dark purple and then transition to light and dark browns and then finally to the lighter yellows and oranges. Another thing to keep in mind is that the fur around the ear is shorter so the lines have to be drawn shorter. Now after drawing the ear the only thing left to draw is the rest of the mane. Starting with the hair around the mane, the hair here changes colors very frequently because 
of all the light and shadows. The main hair around the mouth is shorter, and as you can see, that's how I'm drawing it. And then, as I slowly work my way away from that area, the hair gets gradually longer. The hair also flows more downwards as opposed to on his face where it is more sideways. Below his mouth, his hair flows in a diagonal direction. Occasionally, there are strands of hair that are significantly more in front of the hairs behind. When this happens, I draw and put more emphasis on the hair in front and make sure it looks like it's significantly in front of the hair that's behind it by shading in the areas around the hair in front and then lightly shading in the areas behind it so it appears as if there's more of a contrast and that makes it appear as if there's more distance between them. There's also the matter of drawing the hairs along the edges. For these hairs, it's less likely for your eyes to get lost because they're along the edge instead of being surrounded by all these different hairs in the middle. So for these, I put focus on making sure that they match my reference image more as compared to the hairs in the middle, which are more of an approximation because their eyes just can't see them exactly. And as you look back and forth, you can't exactly match where you were last time when you looked. Now, as I'm drawing the hair from top to bottom of the front portion of the mane, I'm also drawing the portion of the mane beneath his ear. And these hairs are more dark, as you can see. So I use a lot of black and then kind of occasionally use lighter pencils in between the blacks. Here the hair gradually gets lighter again, so I start to switch to more light color pencils. But occasionally there are black shadowed areas in between, so occasionally I have to switch to using black again but it's less frequent than before, and this frequency varies throughout the mane. Now in this portion, there's a gap between some of the hairs, so the hair is less dense, and so I space out my pencil shading. Returning to this portion of the mane, this hair is more fuzzy, so I use shorter lines, but as they gradually transition to longer lines, I will gradually pick up the time between which I pick up my pencil. If you look carefully, you'll notice I'm using this kind of grayish green a lot. This pencil is really useful for kind of showing the spacing between hairs without them all blending into one blur. So therefore, I can still show off the individual hairs looking like independent fibers. Here's a chunk of hair where the hair is really long, separation between other hairs with a big casted black shadow. So, for that area, of course, I usually shade in the shadow area first, and then shade in the hairs along the edge. For the hairs along the edge of shadows, I tend to use kind of a dark purple, purplish red, and some different dark gray pencils. Nearing the lower right portion of the drawing is the most difficult part of this drawing. The reason for that is because that portion is very dark, so it's hard to tell the differences between colors. So I have to make the colors all dark, but at the same time still differentiate sort of between them, because you can still see there's some browns and greens, not just all black. So for the hairs in this region, I add a little bit of black to each of them. So what I'll do is I will, you know, use a green or a brown or a yellow, and then mix in a little black, and then make it so that it looks like a darker version of the same colors that I use in other portions of the main. I also use different darker pencils as well. And basically I rinse and repeat this until I've completed this drawing. After I've completed the drawing, I add my signature. Because I didn't want to affect the drawing itself, I put my signature on the back of the drawing, on the lower right-hand corner. And I usually use graphite pencil to first draw an outline of my signature so it looks good when I later put in using black color pencil. And then I, you know, just put my first and last name and then below it I put the date that I completed it. So as you can see here I'm, you know, taking a couple passes at this so that it reads darker and the letters and numbers are more bold. And then, after I've completed my first and last name, 
I put the date. I put it kind of in the middle of my signature below so that it looks more even and symmetrical. And in order to not use up as much space for putting in the numbers, I, if there's a single digit number, I won't put in the zero. And then I just put in the month, day, and year. And then after that, I record a video panning through the work just so you can see, you know, the details and all the different colors and kind of get a sense of the overall drawing. As you can see, there's a lot of different types of lines. You know, the face, they're much shorter, as I've been saying. And then the whiskers are long, plus the rest of the mane is very long. And then the mane also gradually gets darker and lighter throughout with the lower right, of course, having the darkest portions. And I'm assuming that's because that's the way the lighting was when this photo was taken that I was using for a reference image. So yeah, and then that's it. I hope you all enjoyed this commentary for this drawing. If you like the content that I make, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment on the video. Thank you for your support. It means a lot to me. And I will see you all in the next drawing.